the ambulance had vanished entirely. What's your creepiest glitch in the matrix or the most unexplainable thing that's ever happened to you? Taking the trash out at night, super remote area so I know for a fact we're the only ones around here, getting close to the road and I hear very clearly, help me, from a female voice. Even knowing there's such a slim chance of there being another living person around, I still feel like I should look around and check it out in case I wasn't just hearing things and someone actually needs help. Take about two steps in the direction I thought I heard it, hear a giggle in the same exact voice, turn around and walk promptly back up the driveway because f that. Anyone who actually needed help wouldn't be laughing, I don't think. I was working on my motorcycle in a dirt lot where I had crashed it trying to do a sick drift, breaking off the clutch lever and the gear shifter. I had brought a wrench set with me and I was using one of them to take off a bolt, when I put it down on the ground to finish unscrewing the bolt with my hand. Two minutes later I went to pick it back up and it was gone. I ran all around this dirt lot looking for it to no avail, luckily I had a spare in the car. Fixed the bike and drove back to my apartment to shower as I was filthy. I walked in my room and sitting on my desk was the wrench. I was dumbfounded. I once clocked out of work at 6 p.m., like I always did at the time, and began my hour-long train ride home. After I had found a seat, I went to sleep and woke up just before my station. From the station, it is a short bus journey, 10 to 15 minutes, to reach home. During the entire journey, I didn't use my phone and I don't wear a watch so I didn't really notice the time anywhere. When I reached home, my family surprised me with, you're home early, everything alright. I look at the wall clock and it is about to be 6 pm, I was too shocked to understand what happened. Checked other watches, cell phones etc. And the time is absolutely right. A few days later, the admin emailed us the timesheets for the month, times clocking in and out, and every single days for me was around the same 6 pm, so it certainly wasn't me having left work earlier. To this date, I haven't figured out how I gained between 60 to 90 minutes that day. I am 100% sure I vividly remember a dog that apparently doesn't exist. When I was 16 we lived on the other side of the province and my uncle had this little Jack Russell named Crew. Crew went missing for several months and then turned up at a humane society over an hour away and we were all shocked this little dog has made it so far. That was almost 20 years ago, and the other day I was talking to my parents and was like, whenever I hear about Jack Russell's I think about Crew and that stunt he pulled, and they had no idea what I was talking about. Insisted my uncle had never had such a dog, I must have dreamed it, etc. Honestly anyone else who would have remembered this dog has been dead for a long time and I don't even have any pictures of my uncle. I have absolutely no way to prove this dog existed but I'm sure that he did. 1985. My ex-wife and I were sleeping. There was a small sliver of light coming in through the window from a street light, so the room and bed were dimly visible. Our black Pomeranian was at the end of the bed asleep. I dreamt that I woke up, reached down to pet him, and he turned into a glossy black bivalve oyster thing which opened up to reveal rows of gleaming glass teeth. I woke up to my ex back pedaling up the bed over the pillows towards the wall. I asked what's wrong? She said, what is that shiny black clam thing with the teeth at the end of the bed? Where's the dog? We had the same nightmare at the same time. This still gives me a chill. I had just pulled into the parking lot of where I worked and was walking towards the building. It was like 3 in the afternoon, broad daylight. All of a sudden, I heard an ambulance's siren start sounding. Naturally, I looked down the road to try and see the ambulance. I see it approaching and decided to watch it for a bit. It was quickly getting closer, and it was about to pass right by me. However, there was a large SUV waiting to turn out of the parking lot and onto the road, blocking a few meters of the road from my view. The ambulance passed behind the SUV, probably about 50 feet away from me at most, and I vividly remember the siren becoming completely silent in that instant. The ambulance had vanished entirely as it passed behind that SUV. I was so confused. The road did not have many cars on it at the time, and it was broad daylight. I did a triple take and made sure that I didn't just miss it. I had a clear view of the road going both directions, and there was no more ambulance to be seen. No more siren either. I walked up and down the road, trying to find it for a solid minute. But nope, it was gone. I was well rested, not on drugs, and I didn't have a history of hallucinations. It seems dismissible, but I was completely aware of what happened, and I can't explain it to this day. My wife passed away a year ago today. Had some odd things happen like a couple of old meaningful pictures show up that I swore were in storage. 
The strangest one was I vacuumed the carpet and as soon as I was done a diamond ring was on the ground right where I had just cleaned. It was like she was saying, hey this one is real don't lose it. I remember driving my car to this intersection in this rural area, and I'm checking both sides because of terrible blind spots. In the corner of my eye my mother is sitting there and says something like it's all clear my way. I look back and she isn't there. My mother had been dead for a few years at this point. This was also in the middle of the day and I've never had it happen since. Around 12 years old I was watching Mega's XLR on TV. Sitting there I noticed that the sun just turned off. Like completely. I was real confused, opened the blinds and it was dark. Show was still at the same spot. But the clock on the cable box said it was 5 hours later. My best guess for what happened was that I passed out without realizing it, like those nights where you lay in bed and blink and suddenly it's morning. So I'm guessing I fell asleep sitting up, for exactly enough time to have Cartoon Network play a rerun of the show get to the exact spot I fell asleep at. It was surreal. My friend Sarah was in a nightclub, drunk off her face, when she got an overwhelming urge to tell a total stranger that her leg hurts. It didn't. All a bit strange, she ignores it but it doesn't stop so she walks up to this guy and says, I know this is crazy but I've got a huge urge to tell you my leg hurts. I know that's crazy, again. Sorry. But he bursts into tears. Turns out his dad had just died and they made a pact before that if there was an afterlife, he would get a message to him saying a totally random phrase, so there could be no mistakes, which they decided was I've hurt my leg. I was about 12 years old and woke up in the middle of the night needing to take a leak. I walked across the hall to the little bathroom, hit the lights, and was about to reach for the toilet when I glanced up and saw a face in the mirror. It was not my face. It was as if someone was on the other side, standing to the right, with their face right next to the glass, staring at me. I only saw it for the briefest moment, but it is seared into my brain. I screamed, and ran out of there to find my dad. Of course, my dad investigated, then calmed me down, or tried to. Eventually we had a prayer session, because I was so freaked out. I must have gone back to sleep. Fast forward to my 30s. I'd forgotten all about the event. One night while visiting, my dad quietly brings it up. Remember that one time you saw a face in the mirror? It suddenly came back to me in a rush of memory, sending a chill down my spine. Yeah, I remember. Well. He said, I sometimes think about that night. He looked down at the floor with a serious expression. I saw it too. He went on to describe exactly what I'd seen. We have no idea what that was. When he investigated, he saw it and had a freak out of his own. Apparently the prayer session was as much for his own nerves as mine. I respect him for keeping that tidbit from me till my 30s, but I kinda wish he'd never told me. I had a very important document that I only ever kept in one place. I kept it in the top drawer of a small filing cabinet. I never moved it and would always see it in that drawer whenever I opened it for whatever reason. The day came that I needed it now and I didn't sweat it because I knew exactly where it was. Well, I'd be damned if it wasn't there. Q panic attack. I tore that filing cabinet up. I removed everything and spread it out, flipped papers over, dug through envelopes, shook everything out, shined a flashlight all through the emptied cabinet in case it was somehow stuck to the sides. I mean, it was not there. I can assure you no one took it or was messing with me. I was so frustrated. I even looked through other parts of my house. But I knew it wouldn't be in any of those places and it wasn't. I was intermittently going back to that dumb filing cabinet. No luck. Super irritated, I searched the rest of the house again and, on my way back downstairs where my filing cabinet was, I called out in frustration, okay. Bring it back. I don't know who I thought I was talking to because I was alone, but you guessed it. I found it in the top drawer of my filing cabinet where it should have been in the first place. I was relieved and totally freaked out. So this has always bothered me. I was 13 years old at the time and my dad was a coal miner. He worked third shift, known as the Hudal shift, which was midnight to noon. As such he got home around 2 pm and slept till around 9, got up had dinner with us and left for work. My dad was always pretty gruff and constantly yelled at us if my younger brother or I made too much noise and woke him up after getting home from school, which as an adult now I completely understand. So one day I did something to wake him up, I forget what. Anyways he calls me back to the bedroom and I'm expecting to get a dressing down but he just looked at me and said. It's okay. Come over here and give me a hug. What 13 year old boy wants to hug their dad? I kinda squirmed a bit and he followed up with. 
What if something happened to me? And just laid there all grizzled and tired. I didn't hug him. That night there was an accident in the mine. He saved everyone on his crew, including the one person he went back in for. His was the only death, and I'm convinced he knew it was gonna happen. I'll never forget his eyes that day. If someone asks you for a hug give it to them. I love you dad. When the song The Final Countdown was released in the 80s, I already knew it. It was brand new, just released, but I knew the tune and the words and could sing the whole thing beginning to end. I believed for a while that it was a cover version, but it wasn't. Around 12 years ago I had a dark purple 3 series BMW which I drove to work and parked in the same spot for around 3 years. I sold the car due to mileage and wanting something a little more reliable and purchased a different car. One week later, I turn up to work to find my purple BMW parked in my parking spot. I was totally shocked. Turns out that we had a work experience kid start that day, and his dad had dropped him off in my old car that he bought two days earlier. What are the chances of that? I've never met this kid or his dad, and yet here was my old car in its space. I think most of the people here have experienced the, something falls down and seemingly disappears, thing. But the exact opposite happened to me a couple of months ago. Basically me and a bunch of friends were standing in a circle in our school's hallway, when suddenly we heard something fall. We all simultaneously looked at the floor, and there was a small, silver, foreign coin, Swiss I think, just laying there. I picked it up and asked if any of them had dropped it, and they all denied. I looked around and there was nowhere it could have come from, and the hallway was empty, so there was no one who could have thrown it. Later we joked, that someone in Switzerland probably dropped it, and is now frantically looking for it. About two years ago, I went to collect my husband from the ferry after work. My husband got into the car and as I was driving very slowly out of the car park we both noticed two people standing a few meters in front of our car. It looked as though they were strangers, older looking professionals, both walking to their separate cars in different areas of the car park. The man was reaching into his side bag and the lady was further ahead than the man, with her head turned to the right. I know the exact positions they were in because they were completely frozen on the spot. My husband and I sat there watching the frozen strangers, not saying anything to each other and then all of a sudden it was like someone pressed play and the two strangers just continued on like nothing had happened. My husband and I promised to each other that we would never forget how weird the experience was. I can't remember exactly how long they stayed frozen like that but it was long enough to freak us both out. Two things. Each was witnessed by at least one other person and both were while driving. Once at a stop sign in a neighborhood. All of these little sparkles started swirling around in midair, roughly three to four feet off the ground out of nowhere. The group of them were two feet wide by three to four feet tall. It lasted three to five seconds and then they were gone. No one was around and when I asked my passenger if he saw it too he breathed a sigh of relief and said yes. We spoke about it a little more but there is no reasonable explanation. The second happened when myself and three friends were driving down an empty country road. Very straight stretch. A man on a bike appeared. Someone said to watch out for him, so not to hit him and then he disappeared. Our minds were blown to say the least. Just poof and he's gone. So, this might be hard to explain. I was probably 12, and lived in a big log cabin. One day while my parents were at work, I got in a fight with my brother, 18, who had some anger issues. He chased me through the house and I ran out one door, around our porch and in through another door. I was going to lock it behind me but didn't have time because he was too close behind me. So, I slammed the door behind me and kept running. When I glanced back to see if he had made it through the door yet, he was banging on the window of said door and yelling for me to unlock it. The door was locked and there was no way he had locked it, because the door could only be locked from the outside with a key, of course, and our parents never gave us keys. There was also no way the door could have accidentally locked when I slammed it behind me because it needed to be fully turned to lock, and usually required some finagling at the end to make it actually lock. I stood there dumbfounded for a few seconds and then ran to a bathroom and locked myself in there. Definitely feel that saved me that day. After my little brother was murdered the next morning I was talking with a friend and he mentioned this other dude I went to high school with, his younger brother had died in a car accident a couple weeks before. Later that day I pull out a slip of paper with this other dude's number and name on it from my pants. I vaguely remember running into him a year or so before this at a club where he gave me his number. I swear I had worn and washed these jeans at least a dozen times since I had run into this dude. 
It still makes no sense how that paper was there and I only found it then. I called the dude and we talked a bunch, it really helped me deal with the situation. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more videos. Click the right box for another clutch in the matrix video. And let us know if you believe we live in a simulation. Share your thoughts in the comments.